The executive board of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has recommended that the Nigerian government should increase well-targeted social spending to cushion the anticipated adverse effect of fuel subsidy removal. The recommendation is contained in a statement detailing the conclusion of IMF's just concluded 2022 Article 4 consultation with Nigeria. According to the IMF, fuel subsidy payments have deprived Nigeria of increasing its oil revenues despite recent global oil price increases. Nigeria plans to finally remove fuel subsidy later by June this year. What does this bode for the economy and for the common Nigerian? We would be delving into all of this and we have joining us Steve Okafo, CEO of Kofana Securities. He joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's begin with this report by the IMF saying that uh, Nigeria or the federal government should increase well-targeted social spending to cushion the anticipated adverse effect of fuel subsidy removal, uh, noting that the money could be channeled into investment in subsidized public transportation systems in all local government areas. That's in, uh, in the 36th state and in the federal capital territory. How does this come to you, especially seeing that uh, the federal government plans a gradual phase out of fuel subsidy from April this year? Because it's one question. Yeah, we are here in Nigeria. I if we have energy station, all these machinery energy stations in Potapo, we buy at three fifty. Mm. I'm not buying I'm not buying fuel at less than two hundred. Okay? If we have three fifty there is still a few. Mm. I am not asking myself. So what people are saying remove fuel subsidy, remove fuel subsidy. I took that out here today and I did something. You know that in a barrel of crude oil, you have about 168 liters in a barrel of crude. Currently, the price of crude bread, crude, which is equivalent to oil that we export, price is about 85 dollars. If you convert at 500, for those that are import fuel, they don't get, they don't. That the, the, the asset foreign exchange at the official rate, but I'm using 500 for them. At the end of the day, if the barrel, the barrel is about 42,000, where you convert at 500, it's about 42,500 there. Divided by 158, you have 267 naira. Now, cost of refining, cost of refining a barrel is between two and three dollars. I give three dollars. By the time you finish, the calculation costs about two hundred and seventy-six. I have not included cost of landing. Again, how much is the cost of landing? So when someone is saying federal government is planning to remove subsidy on the fuel of petroleum products, the question I'm asking is, are we still having subsidy right now? Hmm. Well, that's one issue that has still been shrouded in a lot of secrecy as the federal government hasn't been transparent enough when it comes to this issue of fuel subsidy. But we know that the IMF has been one big advocate when it comes to the removal of subsidy, even though uh, it's yeah. not really clear as to whether we're still paying subsidy or not. Because if you look at the analysis you just made. Mm. The IMF is looking at it from a theoretical angle. We are paying for a subsidy is assumed that resources that would have been used for other areas is being used to subsidize fuel. And we know that quite well, we don't even know the ever quantity of liter 
that we use in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. A lot of this important and over-involvement all because of subsidy. So, IMF is not, is within its boundaries to advise us this. But you know what I think? What I think is this. NNCC should remove its hand from the public well. NNCC should only come in to do quality control. To make sure that the fuel imported this specification. Next, when we are talking about, for me, what we should be talking about is that independent people should report fuel. And when NMPC is guiding, everything will be transparent. But when NMPC is the one importing and selling to the marketer, and they have not been audited, they are not transparent. Mm. So, so how do you explain the 195 naira cap where that the uh, federal government or the NNPC has put the price of petrol? Of course, we know that in different states, because of logistic, uh, logistics, yeah. cost of transportation and all of that, we do not have uniformity in the prices in different states. But how do you explain that benchmark of 195 naira if you say there is no subsidy? No, no, no. If, if I'm, I'm talking to December, if I let the Lord go further than that, since December I have not got fuel at 190. I have not got at 160. I have, in fact, at one point in Port Harcourt, we bought at 500 naira per liter. Mm. And right now, as I'm talking to you, there is no filling station. Even the NNPC filling station that sells at the regulated price, you, don't even, you can't even go there. So what I'm trying to say is that if we're currently available all over the country, or in major cities, at 198, 192, 190, if it's at that price, I would say, okay, there is a fuel subsidy. Mm. But, but then only in Lagos and Abuja, are these the only cities in Nigeria? These are not the only cities in Nigeria. So for kind of now, anybody that tells me there's a fuel subsidy, I would tell you that there is a I, I am not seeing any plan of So, mm -hmm. if an entity wants to be transparent, if they want to be fair, if this is being sold at an entity filling station, and we are getting it at one night in then maybe this discussion we have with them, um, I, I, I think I will make a, I will, we'll make head and tail out of this discussion. That's the truth. So apparently there is an underlying issue of transparency from the federal government and also accountability. How do we deal with this? Yes. That is why I say the best thing to do, the best approach to this is that NMPC should remove its hands from a point of wealth. Mm. See, as a stand, you, you, you have, as, as a stand in your station, you have a number of units allocated for each program. Left to you alone, you know, you can exceed those number of minutes. But there's somebody watching and reminding you. And then we say should be going to conclude. And then we say, oh, you know that we said, I want to bring you fuel. Well, let's have a battle of what you want to bring it. We're not saying that that aspect cannot be compromised. It is still can. We are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In the last instance, if there is any problem, for example, the last time NMPC imported, imported it, well, that is, um, that does not need to spend the future. You don't need head rule. No head rule because it's a federal government of that. Mm. But if it's a private individual or a private organization that did that, NFPC will sanction that of that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we went forward in this situation where we are. Yes, I agree. Very soon, uh, double the refinery will come up stream and then the price is better. And the next surprising will not come down. Because that money is an investor. He wants to recoup his money. Hmm. That is the truth. So, so you, you're not even now. optimistic about that? So what? I said you're not optimistic about the fact that that no, refinery no, no, is coming up. It wouldn't ease the burden. Even if that refinery comes up, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing any headwind. I'm not seeing any, any, any situation that will possibly reduce this crisis in the air. Well, 
Mr. Okafo, a new administration will come in by the second quarter of this year, and uh, the IMF is saying that the administration will face elevated inflation, high debt servicing, external sector pressures, and oil sector volatility. And of course, they're also saying that uh, these challenges could be offset if the country was not already facing a revenue challenge. How do you suppose? Because we have these resources, especially the oil resources. Uh, how do you suppose we can tackle these challenges headlong? Uh, looking at the fact that there was a report that in January about 500 billion naira was lost due to the fact that Nigeria could not meet its OPEC quota of 1.6 million barrels per day. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look at it. First of all, if, if, you know, you know, in um, in elementary. Uh, accounting profits. Let me use that word. <laughs> you have to, you have to revenue minus cost <laughs> gives you profit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if, if your revenue is not growing, common sense means that you should watch your costs. You understand? We have heard one of the, the contenders saying that she will reduce cost of governance, which is very, very key to what we're doing. Now, Sector will be dealt with. Yeah, a lot of you know, have heard in social media a lot of um, uh, videos circulating where the oil test, how the oil test is being, is being done. And it's, it's obvious that this is not rocket science. Powers are being are behind it. But unfortunately, there is nothing we can do. We can only just cry and make noise. So if you have a sincere government, that angle can be tackled. And if it is tackled, then, you see, there is nothing wrong with borrowing. There is nothing wrong with borrowing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is wrong with borrowing is borrowing for consumption. I say if you have a good government, if you have a sincere government, borrowing can be done for specific projects that can better our lives. Mm. Well, we know that uh, right now as we speak, the status quo or the information on ground is that come April, that's about two months' time, subsidy removal would begin in a gradual phase. What do you suppose? Do you think that looking at the current hardship that Nigerians are facing, we're already buying fuel at over 300 Naira. Do you think that Nigerians are able to go through another phase of hardship and what do you how much or do you do you suppose that fuel would now be sold for we know that there have been predictions uh, saying that it will be sold for 400 naira but right now a lot of people are already buying it even above that price mm -hmm. yeah, what I see, there is no doubt about that um, hmm. you know there is no doubt that there is no doubt Transportation goes on, cost of food items will only go on, there's no doubt about that. But you see, for who we are pleading is that the power that we should be transparent. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like I've done this calculation, I, I did this calculation from a layman's point of view. And I'm looking at it from the angle that, with what I'm seeing, even if they remove subsidy, the price of fuel comfortably should not be above 300 naira. And if I'm even buying 300 naira right now, I will be complaining. I'm telling you. As long as it's available. It's let it be available. You understand? Let it be available. We don't, it, those are not, we, we, we will refuse our uh, going out to places to <laughs> that are necessary. Places that are productive. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, we, we are in an era of, of before now, before COVID, nobody knew you can hold it in their room. It's not in order of the day. Mm. Mm. So, even when the pressure of the day is removed, people will hold it. Let's assume the pressure of the is removed, and we're buying a 300, and the cost of those things are the way they are, we will reduce our. We will, we will manage the resources, we will manage our houses. We don't just go for frivolities. We do things that are productive. Mm. Well, let's wrap this up by getting your final thoughts. Do you see the federal government, if they eventually uh, look into this option of uh, the IMF saying that they should look at social spending as a buffer uh, when they remove or when they... You, I know you said you don't believe in the fuel subsidy, but do you see them towing <laughs> that path? <laughs> they don't, if, 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 if
federal government at this time, the federal government currently does not have a direction. Mm. You see, uh, they will end up spending or borrowing money for social for 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 social intervention in the name of social intervention, mm. and the money will still go into private pocket. You understand? Mm. I don't believe in anything they are going to do right now, and I because all the social interventions we've been doing since this administration came on screen, and I have not seen anything that led us to. So, social interventions are not wrong with the government, as you said. Like I said, IMF is advising from where they are, thinking that things are running normally in Nigeria, things are not running normally. The best approach is, they you know, if go out there, do what your conscience tells you. If you have the right leadership in Nigeria, things will turn around. Take my word for it. It's not perfect fine. Thank you so much, uh, Steve Okafor, for such holistic and brilliant co uh, contribution to the show this morning. Thank you very much. All right, have a great weekend. Well, we've been speaking with Thank Steve Okafor. He is CEO of Kofana Security, and he's been talking to us about the recommendation of IMF to the federal government on subsidy removal. Still to come after the break, the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, has announced the 50% transport fare reduction on all Lagos State public transport system through the Calrie card system, effective Thursday, February 9, 2023. We'll discuss this after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>